Thus far, we have looked at independence in the case of two events and a multiplication rule, a rule of products. Independence in the case of three events and now a family of multiplication rules looking at various slices. Two intersections at a time, three intersections. We are now ready for an abstract general definition which captures the key ideas that we have discovered so far. So in our general setting, we should promptly consider a general finite family of events, or more generally, a countably infinite family of events. What does the key principle say? That if you look at a family of events, we want a rule of products manifested for intersection probabilities for every finite subgroup. Let us capture this in a short, compact mathematical description, and then we shall flesh it out so that we see exactly what the definition entails. But here, independence ultimately is a rule of products. Independent possibilities multiply whichever way we assemble them. Right. So let's begin. Let us say A1, A2, A3, A4, and so forth is a generic family, either finite or possibly even countably infinite, of events. We will say that such a family of events is independent if and only if for every finite subset of integer indices, let's use blackboard bold J to represent them. So J, blackboard bold, represents a subset of positive integers, for example, 1 and 2, or 3, 7, and 9, or any other collection of integers. For every such collection of blackboard bold J integers, we require that the associated events satisfy a rule of products. The probability of the intersection of those events specified by the index set blackboard bold J is given by a product of the probabilities of exactly those events. All right, this is, has the great virtue of being nice and compact as a description. But of course, we pay a price for compaction in that it is not completely clear, perhaps, exactly what all of this entails. So let's flesh it out and see exactly what the definition is saying. Our definition means the following. Pick a family of events A sub J, J running through either a finite or an infinite range. The events are independent means that pick any positive integer K. Pick any collection of indices, of K indices from your collection, say J1, J2, J3, and so on, jk. Pick k indices. Look at the events aj1, aj2, aj3, and so on, ajk. Look at the probability of the intersection of all those k events. That intersection probability must be the product of the individual probabilities. And this statement must hold for every choice of k, and for every collection of k indices that you can select from your group. Let's flesh it out one more time. This means, if for example k is 2, that a1 and a2 intersected have a rule of products. a1 and a3 intersected have a rule of products. a1 and a4 intersected have a rule of products, and so on. a2 and a3 intersected satisfy a rule of products. A2 and A4 intersected satisfy a rule of products, and so on. A3 intersected with A4 satisfies a rule of products, and so on. In other words, all pairwise intersections possible from your finite or countably infinite family must satisfy a rule of products. Every pair of events must be pairwise independent. Ah, but that's not enough. Once you've exhausted all possible pairs, and there could be an infinity of them, we now look at all possible triples. A1, A2, and A3 intersected 
must satisfy a rule of products. A1, A2, and A4 intersected must satisfy a rule of products, and so on. A2, A3, A4 intersected must satisfy a rule of products, and so on. All conceivable triples intercepted, intersected must satisfy a rule of products. But that's not enough. All quadruple intersections must satisfy a rule of products. All quintuple intersections must satisfy a rule of products. In fact, a rule of products must be satisfied for every finite subgrouping. This is a formidable number of conditions. How on earth are we going to check whether a large family is actually independent? If we were to check each of these by turn laboriously, we would very quickly give up. Fortunately, in the simplest and most commonly occurring of the settings where independence comes into play, we'll find that independence falls into a lap, meaning that all these conditions are tritely and transparently satisfied with the necessity of no checks whatsoever. This is a setting of independent trials, and we will come to this next.